Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last episode, we covered a lot of ground. We learned about arcade printed circuit boards, we learned about converter boards, we learned about JAMA harnesses, micro switches, all sorts of stuff. But now is where it gets real. We're gonna wire this puppy up. So grab your JAMA harnesses, don't forget those micro switches, and let's do this. All right, guys, let's tear this bad boy up. I did not have an arcade one-up um, control board, so I decided to use an empty Pandora's box. So we're going to go ahead and start putting in the buttons. So you just, I already mounted the joystick, super simple, but just push in the buttons, tighten them down, and uh, this is probably the easiest part of the process, but, um, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Just get this thing done. We'll mount the buttons. I'm only going to do four for this video instead of six, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you can wire four, you can wire as many as, as you need. So that's the micro switch. We're going to put those onto all of the buttons right now. Um, they have a specific way they go. It's you when you look at them visually, you can kind of tell. But make sure the red push button part of it is honestly facing down, because if it's facing down, then that's where it needs to be. Um, that's that's where it'll make contact with the actual push button. So once we get these done, I'm just going to align them in place. It's good to kind of organize them in a way that makes sense. Uh, these are going to be the coin and the start buttons. So let's put those push buttons on and put those micro switches in. And that's what we got, guys. There it is. Looks nice and clean for now until we get to wiring. Then it's going to look like a total mess. So let's get to that. So I'm do what I'm doing right now is I'm actually labeling the JAMA harness. So I'm using a Sharpie and I'm labeling the pin numbers 1 through 28. Uh, the reason why I do that is because right now I don't have that harness that I keep talking about that's labeled. So this will just make it easier. All right. Power wires, we don't need those right now, but we'll revisit that in a little bit. So I'm going to start with the buttons, and we're going to start with uh, coin and um, player one. So coin is 16, so pin 16, and I'm going to reference that JAMA pin out for Neo Geo, and then pin 17 is start. And we're going to put that on the normally open part of that uh, micro switch, the one that's closest to the ground pin. All right, now it's time to do the joystick. So what I'm doing here is I like to test what is up, down, left, and right so I can see it. Um, even though I know this from doing it a lot, I like to make sure I know what micro switch is being hit so that I'm wiring the right end of the joystick. And again, you're going to wire the part of the micro switch that's closest to the ground pin. Um, that's where your action button is going to go um, at, at all times. If you wire it to the wrong pole, it's not going to work. So... That takes care of the joystick switches, and now we're going to do um, player one, button one, two, three, and four, which is A, B, C, and D in Neo Geo Talk. So we're just going to wire those up and make sure that you reference your JAMA pinout. Every board is a bit different, so don't expect them all to be the same. That's why I brought that. So now let's just do an overview of the work. You'll see this is just the action buttons, and they're all on the normally open position of the micro switch. So the, like I said, easy to remember, the closest one to the ground pin. It's always going to be that way. So we've got that all wired up. And basically we've got, you know, we've got um, A, B, C, and D. And then we have a coin button and a start button and then the joystick. And you can see all of those. And I, and I did bend those a bit because I couldn't close the Pandora's box case, which is okay if you need to. Now one little tip here is that... Uh, we're ready to do the ground wire, but I didn't have enough wire because this is a JAMA harness I've used before. So s something that I love, these little um, heat shrink tubes that have a little bit of solder in the middle. Uh, you heat it up with all these heat guns and you can extend a wire easily. So no soldering or anything. and It looks awesome and it's super strong. So I would totally recommend those if you needed to extend a ground loop. All right, so now we're doing the daisy chain ground. This is actually a lot easier than you'd think. It's sometimes one of the things that people get tripped up on. Super simple. So you're just going to put it on, start at a point that's probably furthest away than where, to where you need to go, and then just keep wrapping it around. And on your JAMA harness, you'll, this will be all bundled up as a loop, and you're just going to keep going around. Uh, but you want to make sure they're all connected. So everything's got to be connected to that ground loop. So had we, had we wired um, the player two buttons, we would be doing the same thing. So this loop would be extended over there. Uh, to that side. So for right now, this is this is easy easy to show you. 
uh, what you do, but we're just going to go through all these buttons, make sure they're all grounded, and we should be good to go. So I'm going to go through it with you. As you can see, the ground is on every single ground point uh, of this configuration we just set up. And then at the end of that loop, it goes back into the JAMA harness. So perfect. So for now, we're going to wrap up the JAMA harness and put it aside because um, we're not going to need all these other wires in our way. So let's just sort of get these, bundle them, and get them the heck out of here. For right now, at least. But we will revisit them very shortly. So we're also going to remove that video cable because we don't need that right now either. And we're going to focus on the power wires of the JAMA harness. There's our power supply. And... Keep in mind, the power wires are different. The power requirements are different on different boards. So what are you going to need? First, you're going to need a power cord. You could buy one like this, or you could just fray the end of a power cord, cut it and splice it, and you're going to have a white, a black, and a green wire. So that's basically your neutral, your hot wire, and your ground. Uh, these little clips come in handy. You could bare wire the power supply. However, I don't recommend that. Uh, but you don't need to use these clips. I just feel like I feel more comfortable with the connection that it makes, and I'm really struggling with this, to be honest. <laughs> I covered this I covered this earlier. I, uh, I recorded it earlier, and I was having a hard time with the clips. They didn't want <laughs> to want to attach to the wire very good. But once you once you hunker these down, you will need a, you will need that uh, wire cutter tool just to crimp those. It has a crimper at the end, and there you go. Looks exactly like that. Beautiful. Uh, and you've got you got all the wires and you're ready to connect it to the power supply. So you're going to connect the ground wire first. You don't have to do it in this order. It's just the order I did it in. Uh, I then um, put on the the neutral wire and then the live wire, and that was pretty much it. And I'm gonna you're gonna see it in a closer picture in a minute. So there it is. If you want, you can pause that when you're doing this yourself just for reference. But that's exactly how it should look. Um, and now you're ready to wire the power for the actual JAMA harness. So this JAMA harness, the or this JAMA board, the Neo Geo uses 12 volts, uh, 5 volts, or positive 12, positive 5, and ground. Some do use negative 5. This one does not. So that's all you have to do uh, for this board. And that's it. You're done. So now we're going to go on to the video controller piece. We're actually ready to wire that up. So this is simple. You just take that um, video output from the JAMA harness and you plug it in. It's, it's notched, so you can only plug it in one way. You actually can't plug it in wrong. And then you're going to plug the HDMI into that board. And I will have links to the boards and all this stuff that we've used here. Uh, at this point, there's one step that you have to do that I actually forgot to record is this board needs power. So what I do is um, I wire the board directly into the power supply. And this board needs plus 5 and ground. So just make sure that you don't connect it to plus 12. You'll burn that board out. Uh, and that board does come with that connector that you saw there. So it, it's a connector that goes uh, straight to uh, the power supply from that board. All right, so now we're ready to connect the JAMA harness. Slip that on. Don't don't uh, don't be too rough with it. Try to be a little gentle with the JAMA harness. Um, you know, not that it's a not that it could break that easily, but I just like to be careful with it. And uh, we're ready now to put in a game. Let's fire up Metal Slug and see if we've successfully done this. If so, then we are going to be rocking and rolling, and everyone's going to be super stoked. So, moment of truth, and we have video so we got it guys see this is like not that hard we're missing something because we have no audio right now uh but um we will wire the audio in a minute i just wanted you guys to see a little sample of the gameplay a metal slug just looks beautiful on this and that that converter board that converts the signal uh from from the arcade board to um an lcd it, it's a it's a high def converter board. It actually looks beautiful. Like it makes Metal Slug and Metal Slug looks great anyways. But I just feel like it just cleans it up. It looks awesome. It looks so good. And it doesn't do any anything weird. Like it doesn't do smoothing or anything like that. So it's it's pretty much as good as you can get. All right, we're gonna take Metal Slug out now, and I'm gonna put in the multi cart so I can show you guys a little sample of how that thing works. Um, fire this thing back up. When I, when I show you this, I will just, just be aware. The menu for this is kind of lame. So it has this sort of lame menu, but, but it's cool because you have 161 really good Neo Geo games in a single cart. So uh, I really love this option. I think it's cool. And uh, we'll, we'll show you a couple games, uh, especially cool if you like Metal Slug because basically every Metal Slug game is on there, including some bonus sort of hacked versions of them too. Um, but again, the gameplay is great. Uh, the responsiveness of the JAMA harness on the, you know, the actual hardware is awesome. There's no delay at all. It just, it just plays, plays awesome. So I think, like I said before, guys, if this is probably an option that you might 
really enjoy uh, if you like Neo Geo. Uh, but also you could just take the skills from this and apply it to really any arcade board for the most part, you know, around the, you know, 80s, 90s, you know, time period that used JAMA or anything that uses JAMA. All right, so while I'm showing some gameplay, I did want to mention something that we didn't talk about is on the JAMA harness, you'll see something called the solder side and the part side. So the part side is actually pretty self-explanatory, actually. It's the side of the printed circuit board that has the parts on it. So if it says part side, and, or if you're looking at the board and you're seeing the parts and it's flipped around to solder side, that's not the way that's going to connect. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I just want to make sure I covered that. Um, one thing about the multi card I will say uh, I've I will I will be quite open on this is sometimes the multi card can be a little bit flaky um, and and I guess that's to be expected it's kind of a hacked thing it isn't like um, you know SNK came out with that that's actually um, something that you know it's like a China bootleg type thing so just you know you don't expect it to be exactly the same if you want to have 100% um, stability and the best possible experience, what I would suggest is just buying the Neo Geo carts and, and doing that. And, and I just remember this from the first video. MVS carts are pretty affordable for the most part. You can pick up titles from $20, $30, you know, even someone, so you can find someone selling a lot for pretty cheap. But, um, but yeah, the AES carts are really expensive. So that's another reason why I really enjoyed getting into the MVS stuff. All right, so something we didn't cover yet is audio. So audio is going to be on pin 10. And so every uh, primary pin has a backside pin, right? So there's the, like I said, part side and solder side. So the way this works with the audio is pin 10 is the positive lead to the speaker and, and the, the opposite side of pin 10 on the other side of the board is actually the negative lead. So um, these, these arcade printed circuit boards all have audio amplifiers on them. So you don't need to add an amp, but um, you know, some people want to because they want a better audio experience. And you know, you've seen, if you've seen my previous videos, I'm kind of an audio file. So I kind of get excited about good audio. Sometimes I go overboard. But uh, yeah, and then basically once you have it hooked up, you'll have audio and then there's a potentiometer right next to it that you can adjust with a, a Phillips head screwdriver to make it louder or softer, or whatever, uh, however you, you want the audio to be. So you can also, you know, there's other things we'll do in future episodes. In future episodes, I'll show you how you can um, take this out to an amp and, um, you know, do, 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 uh, do an amplified speaker system if you want, you know, if you're not happy with... Uh, with the output that, that comes out of that. But if you wanted an easy modification, you could literally wire that straight to even your stock arcade one-up speaker or a single speaker uh, that you have in a cabinet and, uh, and you'll get audio out of it. And it sounds pretty good. It's not, uh, it's not the best. It sounds better going out in through an amp, obviously, but it's not bad. So just keep that in mind as an option when you guys are uh, exploring this and going down this path. Well, that's it, guys. You guys have all graduated, and you are super JAMA arcade board studs. So that's all I had for you guys. I think all I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the Neo Geo cab, which I based on what we just did, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. All right, guys, I promised you'd see a working product. So this is my arcade 1UP Neo Geo mod. So basically what we just did, but in the cabinet itself. Now I put some touches on it, like this one's got a 19 inch monitor, which I do have a video on how to start to do that. Um, this one has the bezel, which I haven't covered in the video yet, but, or in the, uh, on the channel yet, but I will shortly. Uh, the control panel, that was, this was when I was getting a little ambitious. I don't think I actually took the right amount of time to make this right. So I think I'm going to redo this. I'm not really that happy with the way that came out. Um, the lit marquee is by a buddy of mine, Bruce Yeager, very nice guy and awesome that he did that. It looks really good. He evenly distributed the light out, so it's not easy to do. Um, I just have the Neo, I just have the, uh, metal slug four card in. So that's pretty much it. I put some custom graphics on the front. I have yet to finish the sides. The sides are still street fighter. This was a street fighter cabinet. So, uh, that's that. I'll swing around back, but it's nothing pretty right now because I haven't cleaned up the video on, or cleaned up the wires on this guy. Sorry, guys. I'm going on like not a lot of sleep at the moment, so I'm a little bit loopy. Put the light on so you can see. That video controller definitely should not be like that, so I'm going to fix that. And uh, yeah, the wiring is all down here. There's the power supply. I have to clean up the JAMA wires. There's the uh, Neo Geo system. And there's your video controller, all stuff we covered. So. Hopefully this inspires you guys to do something similar. 
Uh, I've been really excited to share this one in particular with you guys, and I think um, I think Neo Geo is one of those fun systems. A lot of people like it, and hopefully you guys uh, take this and run with it and do something similar. So. Anyway, uh, if you guys like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like the video and hit that notification bell so you can be informed of future videos. But as always, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate all the support of the channel. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.